Tomorrow's quiz is going to look similar to this and the fact that you're going to have one problem that you have to do everything. Find all the stuff and graph it. The rest of the questions are like, here is a rational, find the zeros, find the roots, find the solutions, find the x-intercepts. Here is a rational, find the domain. Here is a rational, find the horizontal asymptote, that sort of stuff. Very specific questions. There's only seven questions. Um, any kind of factoring is fair game, guys, where A is not one, difference of perfect squares, that sort of thing. You cannot forget how to factor. So everybody remember that. Can you use your cheat sheet on the quiz tomorrow? No. No. <clears throat> I've, been tell I've been telling you guys that for like a week and a half. I know, but why not? Oh, because we've been working on it for so long. You can do it. So we need to know these things. We need to know where to look. We need to know how to find stuff. So let's look at this first one, all right? Let's just go through the list. Zeros is the same as x-intercepts. Remember, let's give ourselves a little reminder here too. When we write our domain... It needs to be an interval notation. That's how you're going to write it, an interval notation, meaning from negative infinity to positive infinity, that sort of a thing, brackets and all that good stuff, parentheses. Your vertical asymptotes need to say what? X equals. X equals. Good. When we talk about horizontal asymptote, your asymptote for horizontal needs to say y, y equals. Good. If you have a slant asymptote, what kind of a form should it be in? y equals mx plus b perfect when you find the x and y intercepts how should you write your x and y intercept yeah. as an ordered pair right yeah. so you find y intercept is plug in zero for x and find y when you set your numerator equal to zero and factor you'll have a number and or numbers and a zero for your y <clears throat> holes you can just write x equals so make sure we write our answers in these forms. Interval notation, x equals for a vertical, y equals for horizontal, slant asymptote is y equals mx plus b, and then your intercepts need to be in ordered pairs. Make sure we remember that. All right, so I look at this first one. x squared plus 4x minus 5 divided by x plus 1. How do you find the zeros? How do you find the x-intercepts? Set the numerator equal to 0. Guys, what that means to do is to factor, all right? You're going to see all sorts of factoring. You're going to see where A is not 1, where you have to take out a GCF, all that good stuff. Anything that we have learned before, you guys need to know how to do. So can you factor this? Yes. Yeah. All right. What are the factors of negative 5? That can be a negative 5 when I multiply, <clears throat> but a positive 4 when I add. Five, one, five, one. X plus 5 and X minus 1, right? Okay. So when I set those two equal to 0, I get x-intercepts at x equals negative 5 and at x equals positive 1, correct? Mm -hmm. So on the line where it says zeros or x-intercepts, you would tell me negative 5 comma 0, and what else? 1 comma 0. I know I wrote it in the wrong spot, but it doesn't matter. All right, vertical asymptote. Remind me how you find vertical asymptotes. Denominator equal to zero, so vertical asymptote. X plus one equals zero. Where is your vertical asymptote at? At x equals negative one. Make sure you write what? Make sure you write x equals negative one. What about the domain? Since vertical asymptotes and domain go hand in hand, what's your domain for this function? Negative infinity to negative one. Union, negative 1 to infinity. Perfect. Good job, guys. All right, horizontal asymptotes. Remind me again how we find our horizontal asymptotes. Yeah, the degree of Compare the degree of what? The numerator to the denominator. So it's 2 and 1. 2 is what than 1? Greater. 2 is greater than 1. Look at your cheat sheet. When the numerator degree is bigger than the denominator degree, there's no horizontal asymptote, so you would say none, or no horizontal asymptote, however you want to say it. All right, holes. <clears throat> How do we find holes? Factor top and bottom, right? We already factored the top, so the top was x plus 5, x minus 1, over x plus 1. Is there anything on the top and bottom that is exactly the same? 
No. So are there any holes here? Nope. So you would say none. All right. How about our y-intercept? How do you find y-intercept? Yep. Plug in zero for all of our x's <clears throat> and evaluate. So I have f of zero is zero squared plus four times zero minus five over zero plus one. Negative 5 over 1, which is negative 5. So how do I write that my y-intercept is at negative 5? Parentheses 0, comma, negative 5. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions so far? Everybody okay? Mm -hmm. All right, slant asymptote. How do I know if I have a slant asymptote? Long division. Long division. Sounds good, guys. Sounds good. So I have x plus 1 on the outside. What's on the inside? x squared plus, plus 4x. Mm -hmm. Minus 5. All right. First term into first term. X. x goes into x squared x amount of times. Perfect. So get your subtraction ready. X times x is x squared. X times 1 is plus 1x. Before I can subtract, what I have to do? Distribute, distribute, distribute. So 4 minus 1 is 3x, right? Bring down my minus 5. These cancel out. So first term into first term. X goes in three times, good, so plus three. All right, get your subtraction ready. Three times X is three X. Three times one is plus three. Do I need to go any further? No. Why not? Because there, there's, uh, that's a remainder. The remainder, it does not matter, right? So to write your equation of your slant asymptote, it's Y equals X plus three. So you guys would write Y equals X plus three. Does anyone have any questions about how we found all of that stuff? All right, on the quiz tomorrow, all of those questions, the first six, are all going to be separate. Find this, find that. Then the last question on everybody's quiz version is going to be just like this, where it says find everything. And I'm going to give you a list of everything to find. Now, when we go to graph, the first things you should graph are your asymptotes. So I have asymptotes at where? Negative 1, x equals negative 1. So remember, it's a dotted line, dash, however you want to say it. If you'd like to use my color pencils tomorrow, you're more than welcome to. All right, do I have a horizontal asymptote? No, what do I have? A slant asymptote at y equals x plus 3. That means I go up 3 on the y-axis, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. <clears throat> Is it positive or negative? Positive. So I'm going to go up 1 over 1. And then I'm going to go down one over one. I'm going to use um, a little bit of highlighter here because it, it's kind of hard to see, I know. So do you guys see this is my vertical asymptote? And this is my slant asymptote. Everybody agree? We okay? Okay. All right. So okay. Pick two points to the left <clears throat> of the vertical asymptote. Negative 2 and negative 5? Okay, so negative 2 and negative 5. Let's see what happens when we plug in. So I have negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 5 over negative 2 plus 1. What's negative 2 squared? 4. And then 2, negative 2 times 4 is? So 4 minus 8 is what? Minus 5. Negative 9. And then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So when I plug in negative 2, what value do I get out? Positive 9. Okay, so let's plot that. Negative 2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Up here. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with negative 5. So I have negative 5 squared plus 4 times negative 5 minus 5 all over negative 5 plus 1, all right? Negative, 20, negative 5 squared is? 25. So 25 minus 20. 25. 25 minus 20 is 5, and 5 minus 5 is over negative 4. So when I plug in negative 5, what number do I get? What's 0 divided by negative 4? 0. Okay. When I plug in negative 5, I get 0. Is that an okay answer? Yeah. 
You guys were afraid to say it. So when I plug in negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I get 0. <clears throat> Agreed? Okay. So where does my function exist? Like right here, right? Something like this. All right. What did we not plot that would have helped us see that? What did we not plot first, guys? You didn't, we didn't plot the zeros. We didn't plot our intercepts, did we? Wasn't that the intercept? That, yeah, it was the intercept. That's why I waited to see if anybody was going to say anything. If you plot your intercepts, your x and y, if you do that first, it'll kind of give you a picture of what your graph may look like. It may not give you everything, but it may give you a look. Look, if I plug this here and then at 1, 0, and then I know that my y-intercept is at 0, negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Do you kind of see where your other piece of your boomerang is. Mm -hmm. Where does it exist? Uh, kind of here, like a, like a mirror image, right? Yeah. There you go. A lot of times, your intercept may, not all the time does it give you two points where you can really see it, but a lot of times your intercepts will at least give you one point that gives you kind of, <coughs> excuse me, a suggestion of where you could look. But does anybody have any questions about that? On your quiz, I'm very specific with your directions where it says plot. I think it says an additional five points. I want you to make as many points as possible. Take a little bit of extra time so you make sure your graph is correct because I am going to be grading your graphs. All right, let's look at number two. Number two is a little bit different. Some of you had some questions about it. That's why I left it like this, and we'll look at it later, or I thought we'd look at it later meeting today. So let's go through the motions again. Zeros. How do you find the zeros? Set the numerator equal to zero, okay? So that really means to factor. So x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals zero, yes? Okay. So when I factor this, what happens? x plus 3 and x plus 2. You guys agree? So I have zeros at negative 3 and at x equals negative 2, correct? Okay, so I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say <clears throat> I have a 0 at negative 2, comma, 0, and negative 3, comma, 0. Correct? Did I write that correctly? All right, now let's find our vertical asymptotes. How do you find vertical asymptotes again? Denominator equal to 0. So x squared minus 9 equals 0. x squared equals 9. Take the square root. What does x equal? plus or minus 3. So vertical asymptote, I'm going to say, okay, x equals positive 3, x equals negative 3. Is it okay for you guys to write plus or minus? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> if I'm going to write my domain based upon what I found so far, what's my domain? Negative infinity. Negative infinity. To negative 3. To negative 3. Union. Union. Negative 3 to 3. Negative 3 to 3. Good job, Roll. Very good. All right. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right. How do I find horizontal asymptotes? Compare the degrees. Numerator degree to the denominator. My horizontal asymptote. Well, it's two and two. Two equals two. Correct? So to find the horizontal asymptote, you say the numerator coefficient over the denominator coefficient. Y equals. So my horizontal asymptote is at Y equals what? Y equals one. How do you find y-intercept? <clears throat> Set all of the x's equal to 0. All of the x's equal to 0. So f of 0 equals 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 6 over 0 squared minus 9. 6 over negative 9, which is negative 2 thirds. OK, so my y-intercept is at 0, comma, negative 2 thirds. Remember, intercepts are in ordered pairs. Let's find our slant asymptote. We'll talk about holes in a second. Slant asymptote. How do you find slant? Long division. Good job. Good job. Good job. x squared plus 5x plus 6. All right. First term into first term. x squared goes into x squared one time. So is there a slant asymptote? No slant asymptote. We write none. Now, we haven't talked a ton about holes. There were some of your on your web assign, 
but a whole remember guys is where the function does not exist correct yes or no a whole is where the function does not exist. So on a graph, it would be like an open circle. So when I look at my function, in order to find holes, we factor. Well, we already factored the top, right? X plus 3 and X plus 2. You guys agree? When we factor the bottom, X squared minus 9 is X plus 3. X minus 3, right? What do you notice? A hole. There is a hole here. They have these in common. So when you discover that there's a hole, whatever they have in common, you cross it out and set it equal to zero. So in this case, guys, there happens to be a hole at what? X equals negative three. Well, let's go over here and look for a second. There's a hole at X equals negative three. What do you notice looking at this? It's one of our zeros. It's also one of our what? Vertical asymptotes. If you have a hole that happens to be on a zero or an asymptote, what that means is that asymptote actually doesn't exist. There's not a vertical asymptote that the graph doesn't cross. There's just a what at that point? No. Just a hole. So when this happens, when the hole is the same as one of your asymptotes and your zeros, you can just cross it off. Yes, sir. When you take the points off, I leave it. Yes. <clears throat> I know. I am the worst person ever. It's also going to change our domain a little bit, but I'll show you in a second. Now, does this happen a lot? No. No. Is this something that you guys will see probably 100 times if you do 100 of these problems? Okay. No. But I just want you to be aware in case it does happen. So let's graph. What's the first thing we should plot? Vertical asymptote. In this case, I only have one now, so it's at x equals what? x equals positive 3. So 1, 2, 3. So here. All right. Where do I have a horizontal asymptote? At y equals 1. Okay. So here. Do I have any intercepts? Yeah. Use the whole word if you're going to say yes. yes. Do I have any intercepts? Where are they? <clears throat> X, equals negative. Uh, X equals negative 2. So right here. And where's my y-intercept? 0, 0, negative 2 thirds. So it's just below what? Zero. Just it's just below. Negative one. Just above negative one. Right, just below zero, just above negative one. Now, what do we know we have at x equals negative three? A hole. A we hole. have a hole. So I'm going to put my hole in my graph. I have a hole right here. Do you guys see where your boomerang is going to exist? Yes. Where? The bottom left. So look, I'm going to draw my boomerang here, but what am I going to do right there where there's a hole? Don't draw a line through it. No. Does the function exist right here at this hole? No. No. Whoops. So that's why you have an open circle right here. That's your hole. <clears throat> you, we didn't draw through it. Do you see how I like connected? My function goes here, and then it stops right there at the hole, and then picks up again. Yes, sir? So we just, like, uh, connect it to the hole and mm -hmm. just keep going after that? Mm -hmm. Just make sure you have an open circle, if you guys see this. Now, how would you find where your other boomerang is? You need to pick points where? To the right of your vertical asymptote? Mm -hmm. All right, because we need to know if it's above or below the horizontal. So pick two points to the right of your vertical asymptote. Okay, eight, and what else? Four. Okay, four and eight. What's my original function? Can you read the original to me, please? C. X squared. Plus five. Thank you. Plus six. Uh -huh. Over. X squared minus nine. Okay, so when I plug in eight, we have eight squared plus five times eight 
plus 6 <clears throat> over 8 squared minus 9. 8 squared is 64, and this is 40. So what's 64 plus 46? 40. Well, 64 plus 40. Plus 6. 110. And then 64 minus 9. 55. Okay, so 55 goes into 110 about how many times? Two-ish. Okay. Is it two exactly? Oh, perfect. Good job. So I go over eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and up two. <clears throat> okay, let's plug in four. When I plug in four, what happens? So I have four squared plus 5 times 4 plus 6 over 4 squared minus 9. So 4 squared is, and 16 plus 20 is, plus 6, 42 over 16 minus 9 is 7. How many times is 47 going to 42? 6. So I go over four, one, two, three, four, and up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Do we see where this boomerang exists? Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. You guys are so smart. So how does our domain change because of our hole? Oh, don't steal my thunder. What can I take out? I can take out that part of the, because it just goes your domain <coughs> is what? What is your domain going to be here? See if somebody can tell me. Negative infinity. It's negative infinity, not to three. Negative infinity to what? Negative three. Uh, to negative three. Uh, right? It goes to negative three. Uh -huh. But does it include it? No. no. And then it goes from negative three to what? <laughs> negative negative one. Negative two point nine. Negative two point nine. <clears throat> negative three. Okay, so just relax for a second. And then to what? Three, three, two, okay. Does it really change anything? No. No. <laughs> because I want you to think for a second, and you did. I I well, be confident in yourself. But look, uh, you did get 100 on the quizzes yesterday. We're all well aware, or whenever it was. Do you guys see? Do you visually see where the hole is? In this case, the hole happens to be at the place of the asymptote. That's why they replace each other, right? Because it's not actually, it's just that one little spot on the graph that doesn't exist. All right? Okay, let's go to the next one. Same thing. Let's go through. Let's go quickly through. This one threw some of you for a loop. How do you find the x-intercepts or zeros? You said the numerator. numerator equal to zero. x squared minus four equals zero. So x squared equals four. x equals plus or minus two. So my zeros, my x-intercepts are going to be at negative two, zero and positive two, zero. Agreed? Okay. So <clears throat> how do we find vertical asymptotes? Set the denominator equal to zero. Guys, this is just factoring. 3x squared minus 15x equals zero. GCF? 3x. 3x. If I take out 3x, I'm left with x minus 5 equals zero. So set each piece equal to zero. x equals zero, right? And x equals 5. So you have vertical asymptotes at x equals zero and x equals five okay that means you can tell me the domain what's your domain negative infinity to zero, negative infinity to zero. union five. zero to five union, union. Five, to five to infinity good <clears throat> horizontal asymptotes how do we find horizontal asymptotes compare the degree numerator to denominator it's two and two. So what? They're equal to each other? 
So it's y equals, what's the leading coefficient of the numerator? One, good. What's the leading coefficient of the denominator? Three. three. So you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals one over three. Where is y equals one over three? It's in between one and zero, just above one, okay? <coughs> How do you find holes? How do you find holes? Factor, all right? We've already factored the top and bottom. X plus two, X minus two, right? Over... 3x times x minus 5. Anything exactly the same? No. Nope, no holes, so none. How do you find y-intercepts? Plug in 0 for everything. So f of 0. 0 squared minus 4 over 3 times 0 squared minus 15 times 0. Negative 4 over 0 is what? 0. No. Undefined. So are there any y-intercepts? No. no. Does this cross the y-axis? No. no, there's none. It is not zero. If zero's on the bottom, it's undefined, guys. Come on, guys. Come on. Jeez. All right, slant asymptotes. How do you find slant asymptotes? Long division. So 3x squared minus 15x into x squared. Well, 3x squared into x squared. It doesn't go in. It actually does. It goes in how many times? One third, which is our, our horizontal asymptote, correct? Yeah. So is there a slant? No. Nope. So when it's the same degree, we never have to. Correct. <clears throat> All right, what are we going to plot first? Our zeros. Our zeros. Okay, we can do our zeros first. So at negative 2, 0, and at positive 2, 0. All right, was there a y-intercept? No. no. Where are our asymptotes? At x equals 0, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay. Do I have a horizontal asymptote? Yes. At y equals 1 third, right? So it's going to be just above here. Does everybody see this? Yeah. Oh, now you, it's hard to see. How's that? A little better? Yep. All right, so let's pick two. Let, we already have one point to the left of the furthest left vertical asymptote, which is zero. Pick another point. Negative eight. Negative eight. Okay, fine. Let's do negative eight. If I plug in negative eight, let's do it up here. Negative eight. Let's see what we get out. Well, my function would be negative eight squared minus four over three times negative eight squared. Minus 15 times negative 8. Ay, ay, ay. All right, so 64 minus 4 is what? 60. 60. So 3 times negative 8 squared. What's 64 times 3? 192. What is it? 192. 192, okay. Minus or plus? Negative 15. Okay, so 192, what's 15 times 8? Positive 120, mm -hmm. yes? So what's 192 plus 120? 312. 312. What I'm trying to show you guys here, 60 divided by 312 is a small number. It's less than 1, correct? Mm -hmm. But it's what kind of a number? Positive. It's positive. So when you see this, I'm going to say less than 1, right? When you see this on a graph, if I go over 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's, your asymptote is at 1 third. This number is in between your vertical asymptote and the x-axis, but it's above the x-axis. It is positive. It's below that vertical asymptote, but it is a positive number. So it's going to look something like this. It's going to get close to that asymptote, but not touch. Now, in the middle here, you're either going to have a snaky-looking thing or you're going to have a parabola. So we already have one point. Let's pick a point <clears throat> closer to the right-handed vertical asymptote. Okay, pick four. And just see where this other point goes, and then that will give us our direction. So if I plug in four, 
I have 4 squared minus 4, right? Over, it's 3 times 4 squared minus 15 times 4. Okay. So 4 squared is 16 minus 4 gives me 12. 4 squared is 16 times 3. What is 16 times 3? 48. 48. Minus, what's 15 times 4? 60. 60. What's 48 minus 60? 12, 12, 12, 12. Negative 12. So negative 1. When I plug in 4, I get negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1. Now, does that help you 100%? Do you know exactly what this middle part is going to look like? Parabola. Or could it also be a snake? It could be a parabola, but it could be a snake. What should we plug in just to make sure the direction that we're going to go? 1. Positive 1. All right? I need to know if I'm going up here or if I'm going down here. So you need to, you, I, I'm not going to tell you exactly what points to pick, but you guys are going to have to make that decision on your own. So if we plug in positive one, one squared minus four, right? And then three times one squared minus 15 times one. So I have negative three over what? Negative 12 gives me what? Positive 1 fourth. So when I plug in 1, I'm at positive 1 fourth. That is above that horizontal asymptote. So what kind of a shape is this going to make? A snaky looking thing like this. You've got to be careful, guys, on which way things are moving. <clears throat> Don't just assume, oh, it's a parabola. I'm just going to draw a parabola. You have to make sure you check. And then the last one, let's just check two points to the right. Six and one fourth is greater One fourth is less than well, but you, it's it's here. What I'm getting at is it's above the x, it's above the x-axis. You can go through a horizontal asymptote. You cannot go through a vertical one. These lines are ju it's just so sh so small, like it's hard to see. But you can go through a horizontal asymptote. You can't go through a vertical one. It's above the zero. Is what I was getting at. It's not coming back down like a parabola. Yep. All right, so what are we plugging in? Okay, six. Let's plug in six and ten. It's going to be big numbers, guys. So when I plug in six, six squared minus four over three times six squared minus 15 times six. Six squared is 36 minus four is what? 32? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> and then on the bottom, what do we have? 36 times 3. 108. Come on, guys. <laughs> 36 times 3. Okay, 108 minus, what's 15 times 6? 90. What's 108 minus 90? It's 18. 18. How many times about does 18 go into 32? Almost what? Almost two. Almost two. So we'll say one-ish. So I'm going to go over six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and go up one and a bit. Do you guys see where your parabola is going to exist? Mm -hmm. On the top. You guys would go ahead and plug in 10. I want to just make sure we get to the rest of these. So this is going to go like this. I cannot impress upon you enough the importance of plugging in. The hardest part for you guys is going to be plugging in numbers and doing the math correctly. Write it down. Take your time. Don't try and do everything in your head. It's not worth it. All right, let's look at these real quick. I just want to go through just extra practice. I just want to go through, again, how to find everything. These factoring ones are a little harder. So if I'm going to factor, all right, let's just factor. When they say factor, they mean factor the top and bottom here so you can see what it looks like. When you factor the top, guys, you take out x, and then you're left with x squared minus 9, correct? Yeah. Can you factor that more? Yeah. So your numerator would be x times x plus 3, x minus 3, correct? Okay. So we factor the bottom. What can you take out of all three of these? x minus 3. 3. Oh, we could take out a 3. And then we'd be left with x squared minus 2x minus 3, right? 
What are the factors of negative 3 that multiply to give me a negative 3 but add to give me a negative 2? X minus 3 and X plus 1. So all this is doing here is just having you practice factoring. If I asked you what the domain was, you guys would set the denominator not equal to 0. If I asked you what the X intercepts were, you would set the numerators equal to 0, right? All that stuff we just got to go through. If I compare the numerator and the denominator degree, numerator and denominator degree, the degree of the numerator is 3, the degree of the denominator is 2. If 3 is greater than 2, what's the horizontal asymptote? There's none. There isn't one. Good. Good. Where are your vertical asymptotes? How do you find vertical asymptotes? Denominator not equal to 0 or equal to 0. 3 equals 0. Is that ever true? No. So you have x minus 1 equals 0. Sorry, x plus 1 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. So where are your vertical asymptotes at? x equals positive 3, x equals negative 1. Roots, that just means the zeros, the solutions. You set the numerator. So you say my roots would be at x equals 0, x plus 3 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0. So you have roots at 0, 0, negative 3, 0, and positive 3, 0. Correct? Do you have a hole? Do you have anything on the top and the bottom that is exactly the same? Yes. So, guys, where is there a hole? There's a hole at x equals what? Positive 3. Well, what does that tell you now about some of the other stuff we already found? The vertical asymptote. Is there a vertical asymptote at 3 if there's a hole at 3? No. No. Good. <clears throat> and then pick the graph that matches. Yep, it is C. All right, look at the next one. It's a big problem, but who cares? Let's factor it first. Factor the top. What are the factors of negative 12 that multiply to give me negative 12 but add to give me 1? X minus 4. X minus 4. And X plus 3, okay? On the bottom, what are the factors of negative 8 that multiply to give me negative 8 but add to give me negative 2? X minus 4 and what? X plus, two. X plus 2. Right away, what do you guys notice? There's a hole. There's a hole. Okay. But if you're going to find the horizontal asymptotes, compare the numerator degree to the denominator degree. 2 equals 2. Where's your horizontal asymptote at? Three. And it's y equals 1. Y equals 1. It's the numerator coefficient over the denominator coefficient. It's <coughs> the so next question ask. For the roots, the zeros. How do you find the zeros again? Numerator equal to zero. So my numerator equal to zero would be x minus four equals zero, x plus three equals zero. So I have roots at four comma zero and at negative three comma zero, correct? Yeah. All right, and what did you guys tell me about a hole? Is there one? Yeah. Where? At x equals four. So what do you know about the zero or the root? Is there a root? Is there an x-intercept at 4? Yes. Can there be a hole and an x-intercept in the same spot? No. no. So what do we know about this root? It it's not there. It doesn't exist. Did I skip one of the questions? Oh, vertical asymptotes. Sorry. Yep. Do you ask us to find the x-intercepts? Because like, you said there's going to be questions where we just mm -hmm. have to find one thing. Um, there won't be any holes that negate the x-intercept. <clears throat> if you were asked for your vertical asymptotes, guys, what are the vertical asymptotes? Or what is the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2? Why is it not at x equals 4? Because, there's, because a there's a hole there. Okay, good. <clears throat> All right, let's look at the last one. I want to talk about this one again. <clears throat> How do you find the, what, what did they ask you to do here? Factor, right? Can you factor the numerator of x cubed plus 1? No. Can you factor the denominator? x minus 1, x plus 1? Yes. All right, compare the degrees. The numerator degree is 3. The denominator degree is 2. 3 is what than 2? Greater than. Greater than. If 3 is greater than, <clears throat> then 
then what do we know about the... There's no horizontal asymptote. There's no horizontal asymptote. There's none. Where else are we looking? What are we looking for? Vertical asymptotes. How do you find vertical asymptotes? Denominator equal to zero. So you have a vertical asymptote at x equals one, and x equals what? Negative one. Good. What's the next thing ask? How do you find the zeros? Numerator equal to zero. x cubed plus one equals zero x cubed equals negative 1. No, it's cubed. What number times itself three times could give you negative 1? Are there any holes? Nope. Okay, we're good. All right, I want to go through these two real quick. Just so you guys don't get surprised, confused. I told you factoring, all that stuff is fair game. If I asked you for this first little example to write, if I asked you for the first example to write the domain <clears throat> and tell me the vertical asymptotes, where do we look for domain? Denominator. The denominator. You set the denominator equal to zero. So x squared minus 11 equals zero. How would I solve this? I move 11 over, right? x squared equals 11. Take the what? The square root. The square root. So x equals plus or minus what? The square, root. square root of 11. All right, I'm not going to ask you to graph that, but is that a real solution? Yes. yes. Is that a real place on the graph? Absolutely. So your vertical asymptotes for this question would just be plus or minus 11. How would you write the domain if this were your answer? Tell me. Infinity and negative square root. Hold on one sec. All right, negative infinity to what? Negative square root of 11. Negative square root of 11, all right? Perfect. Then you got a union negative square root of 11 to infinity. I mean, positive to infinity. It's the exact same thing, guys. Square root of 11 is a number. It's not a great one, but it's a number. That's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. What about if you had something like this one and I said find the domain? <clears throat> what do you do with the denominator? Okay, x squared plus 2 equals 0. We're figuring out what the denominator cannot be, where our asymptotes don't exist. So I move 2 over, this becomes x squared equals negative 2. Then what? And you square both. Okay, can you take the square root of negative 2? No. No. Are there any domain restrictions here? No. No, is there anything your denominator cannot be? It can be anything. It can be anything. So how would you tell me my denominator can be anything? Negative infinity to positive infinity. If I asked you what were the vertical asymptotes, you would tell me what? There was none. There's nothing in there that you cannot have as an x value. It could be anything positive, anything negative, could be zero. Everything is fine. But on specific, you're not going to have to ever graph anything like that for me. But on a specific question, if you get the square root, that, that can be an asymptote. That can be part of your domain. So just pay attention to stuff like that. I don't want you guys to get tripped up on silly stuff. 